Let me go back to this, uh, what do you call the unit times. So let's see here. Let me share the screen with um, Tammy. You can see my screen, right, Tammy? Yes. All right, let us uh, start to read this one and it's been for a while. We come back. Can you? Okay. What is the root, Magasina, of the past? present and future time. Ignorance. By ignorance are conditioned formations. By formations, relinking, relinking consciousness. By consciousness, mind, mind, I can, something in matter. The sixth sense basis, and by the sixth sense basis, contact. By contact, feeling, by feeling, Craving, craving by craving, attachment by attachment, becoming by becoming, birth by birth are conditioned, old age, death, grief, lamentation, pain, sorrow, and despair. So that's what all things about, the whole charge about. And that's what uh, would I say, that's where beginning of times. Mm, so one more time, in Buddhist view, no one great outsell, no greater in Buddhist view, but accept our own karma, our karma with us here. Hi, I'm Stephen, how are you been? Mobate, I am well, how are you doing? Yeah, thanks, we miss you for a while. Glory, how are you been, Glory? Mm. Okay. So this is a chart here. So uh, I call to do charge. You say um move back here. So we get so that we can help you move. Yeah, I'm doing okay. Um because I'm driving right now. Oh yeah, please uh, try yeah. set me. Yeah. Right. Thank you. So the number one, number two is belong to the past. In the past, we have some type of karma, some type of ignorance, we raise some type of karma. And um, from number three up to the action, number nine is the present. In attachment, we go, we take another report. That's what's about. Yeah, that's what's about the whole charge here. And that's we, we discuss. So the first two belong to the past. Uh, from consciousness to becoming, uh, that's what the present comes. Uh, and the birth became, this is for the future. So last time we talked about the mind and matter, how we born, how um, we come about here. So let's just uh, move on, move on to this first this one. You like to do it? Yeah. Ivan, right? I can see it number two, please. You say the ultimate beginning of things is not apparent. Yeah, um, you, you say? You say the ultimate beginning of things is not apparent. Give me an illustration. The blessed one said, by reason of the senses based, basis in this sense objects, there arises contact. By reason of contact, feeling. By reason of feeling, craving. And by reason of craving, action. Uh, then from action, sense bases are once more produced. Now, could there be any end to this series? No. Just so, okay, the ultimate beginning of things can't be comprehended. Oh, they can stop here. Yeah. So you understand what's about? You understand that? Can you see why? Summarize. Um, to see it is to believe mm -hmm. the idea that because we said something or Nietzsche, if I think therefore I am. This idea that because I send something or see something or experience something, it is as I am experiencing. Mm -hmm. So he asked 
could there be any end to this series? Say no. Why is that? It's a cycle. Could could the end the end and the end of, of this cycle? Mm, what do you think? Yeah. Could be right. So this the, that these two the link these two links. Would I say that if we cut up the link, this the chain? If we cut up, it would be free, but not easy. Not yeah. easy because we we have to raise this kind of have to pardon for so many so many lifetime. Yeah, where the stems are the travel to break the cycle to travel the cycle or to simply break it to break it. Right. It's not easy. <clears throat> yeah. And Stephen, uh, would you mind to read next from this number three? Is the ultimate beginning of everything unknown? Partly so and partly not. Then which is so and which not? Whatever conditions preceded this birth, that is to us as if it had not been. In reference to that, the ultimate beginning is not known. However, that which has not been comes into existence. And so, so, and as soon as it has arisen, it disappears again. With reference to that, the ultimate beginning can be unknown. Hey, can you hear all that? Yeah, we can hear okay. you. I can't see the bottom. That was it at the end there. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Can you understand? Half of it, I guess. <laughs> it's the ultimate, is that the ultimate beginning of everything? So you say in that circle, right? In that circle, it's just the beginning of everything unknown. So you say yes or no, right? Partial yes, yes, yes or no, right? So which so which one is yes, which one is no? Mm. Okay, I see, I see. Yeah. And I think it uses basically trying to explain for us to determine which point is at the beginning. And which is, you know, the uh, unknown and which is known, I guess. But mm. hi, and you know how you been? Oh, been oh wow. Been great. How are you? Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Last few weeks, uh, we so uh, busy with the summer camp. Yeah. 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 So how you been? I've been great. I'm in El Salvador at the moment. Whoa. You live are you in Houston or where? In El Salvador. Oh really? Wow. Yeah. It's wonderful. Yeah. yeah, probably after this I'd like to talk with your dad uh briefly if he has time. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. here actually. Not now, not now. After this, after this. Yeah. Yes. All right, thank you. Welcome. Yeah, well and, and Stephen, and uh, can you mm -hmm. explain one more time? West West is no, West and no. The um the known would be right after your birth, but the own unknown is before that, I Simple. believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I mean, I think it brings up one of the really interesting aspects of um, and the trickiest aspects of Buddhism is the ultimate reality and relative reality. Eventually. So, yeah, in, in ultimate reality, there's no beginning, no end. No, you know, it is empty, is emptiness. But then in our relative reality, where we experience us as people mm -hmm. and we, the experience starts, sure, at birth. Mm -hmm. So, um, and the, I, for me, I think that's one of the most interesting things that Buddhism kind of invites you to balance is ultimate what is your understanding of ultimate reality and then what is also your relational 
Thank you. Yeah, Tammy, please, number four, Tammy. Are there any formations that are produced, certainly O'King, where there is an eye and also forms there is sight? Where there is sight, there is contact. Where there is contact, there is feeling. Where there is feeling, there is craving. Where there is craving, there is attachment. Where there is attachment, there is becoming. There is becoming, there is birth, old age, death, grief, lamentation, pain, sorrow, and despair. However, where the eye, it, where the eye in forms are not, sight is not, contact is not, feeling is not, craving is not, attachment is not, becoming is not, and where there is no becoming, there is no birth, old age, death, grief, pain, sorrow, or despair. Hmm. You understand, Kimmy? So it, it's showing opposite ends where there's formation when there's the different contacts, the five different contacts. But then when there's not, then it's the opposite where there is there is nothing. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I like to tell uh, a Zen story. Um, so this one Zen master, uh, met a uh, lay person. So that lay person asked, mm, does the dog uh, have Buddha nature? So that the master said, yes. In Buddhism, uh, Buddha nature has been the, the good of nature, the compassion or all type of virtues, what they call the Buddha nature or awakening nature. That's the first lay man came to ask the master, he said, yes, the dog has Buddha nature. And the second layman came up and asked the same question. And the master said, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the third person came and wonder, the first two laymen asked you the same question, but you respond in different way. What's, what's, the whole, what's going on? So uh, the Zen master say, well, at first I recognize dog or any, any sense of beings, human beings, a cat and dog and so forth. Yes, they have that pure nature, good of nature, good of nature. And the reason why I respond to the second man that mm, no, because yes, even the dog know, even the dog has good of nature, but he, he, they don't know how to activate that. Only us as human, we know. We can recognize. That's what, why he say yes and no right there. So we'll go back to here, um, similar, in a similar way that, um, yes, the reason why we, we revolve this cycle because we, are, we have to all kind of attachment, all kind of um, cleaning. That's why we raise all type of um, commas there. Right? Uh, and until we know, we would, know how to uh, recognize that what type of good karma we want to do. Otherwise, we, we don't know. Uh, we, we just do all kind of karma um, uh, depending upon the situation. Uh, so this case, so he said that, yes, if um, there's a link, it will connect to the whole circle. If there's no link, so to, we take off. From this link from this cycle but it's not easy okay let's see here um uh, you might have to read yeah i don't know Mm, yeah, sorry. The forest and the way of being found and the history of the effort of man and the way of the forest was the process. The result of the family foundation is that I can You understand this? Is it what's mean? Hmm. Hmm. 
so he has at the end of formation that's mean and the and the clink of, of this cycle right mm -hmm. and up to views right to say no everything's going to be process yeah. yeah so that's why he say that uh, the illustration like the house in the back back then they um they build a house with the wood it would be the uh, yeah the wood and and the clay mm -hmm. uh, that is what about it. Yeah, uh, Maria, you like to read the message, please? Yeah, he's there. Oh, can I hear you? Sorry. Mm. Oh, my apologies, I wasn't muted. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, we can hear is, you now. Is there Nagasena, such a thing as the one who knows, Vegada? What is this thing? The living principle within the, that sees, hears, tastes, smells, feels, and discerns things, just as we, sitting here, can look out of the window we wish to. If, O oh King, the living principle within can see, hear, taste, smell, and feel things like you say, can it not see forms through the ear and so on? No, venerable sir. Then, O oh King, the living principle within cannot make use of whichever sense it pleases as you suggested. It is, O King, by reason of the eye and forms that sight and of and those other conditions arise, namely contact, feeling, perception, intention, one pointness, vitality, and attention, each arises simultaneously within its cause and errand. The one knows cannot be found. The one who knows cannot be found. You understand this part? Hmm. So is it saying that our uh, perception and our sensations keep us attached to this world and therefore um, away from truth? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, mm, so basically the, the one who know this somehow you say this is like ego, right? And the yeah. kind of ego and the kind of cell there. So you say no, it's only from the perception, right? The thinking, the feeling, and so forth. But that's the um the rare traditions in the high tradition we have what we call Buddha nature, um Buddha nature then. Uh, I used to say, you know. Is Buddha nature inherent goodness or or is it emptiness? Goodness. Okay. Emptiness in, in the ultimate sense. Would you mind to turn on the, uh, the pants there, please? Over right there. The pants over there. Yeah, the pants over there. Over there. The, the plug, uh, the yeah, in the world. Because, because sometimes I hear it in the context of it in, um, Thank yeah, you. like, like inher inherent goodness. Mm -hmm. But then sometimes I hear it, at, I'll hear it in the context of Buddha nature is, is just the, the emptiness that's 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 why people mess up. We this we come up. Uh, okay. we, could, we come back to that topic. Okay. This weird profile, but um, up to now they, 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 okay. this weird profile. But we, in general, in conventional way, okay. uh, Buddha nature is the uh, embodiment of our pure virtue, compassion, loving kindness, uh, and so forth. That's what the, the Brahma would be the Brahma part. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. okay. Yes. Anyway, so you say that mm, there's no cell except uh, this type of link, right? From the eyes, is uh, no and so forth. It has the sign. Uh, so that's why that's why we we do again and again this type of cycle. And uh, in Buddhist view, there's no real cell there. That's what about. It's hard to, to think, right? Yes, Maringo. Oh, yeah. um, I was wondering, um, how does one um, har harness that Buddha nature? How does that one make it grow? What, what do you say, please? How does one um, makes your Buddha nature grow or show? It, it's uncovering. It's uncovering. <laughs> it's, it's, it's there. That's the thing. It's inherently, it's all, all there, but it's all your it's all your ignorance and mm -hmm. formations on, on top of that, mm. that is, is where it's clouded. It's not 
it's not the qual it's not necessarily a, the qualities you need to cultivate it's what you already have what so you already like have that's been conditioned over with the it's more about discovering the Buddha nature then instead of yes. just yes. cultivating it. Okay. Yes. Yeah, that's Thank a bit in so in Zen tradition this it used the uh, um, analogy of uh, the moon or the sun. When there's no cloud, the sun will shine. When there's no cloud, the moon will shine. So that one is the, is the symbol uh, uh, um, that represents a pure nature. It's within ourselves that uh, because of all kinds of ignorance, all kinds of attachment, all kinds of um, craving and so forth, those kind of mental fluctuation cover, cover that pure nature, that's all. Mm. And that's why, that's why in Buddhism we accept everyone, regardless of who they are, um, whether they criminals, whether they good you know, people and so forth, everyone has Buddha nature, uh, has potential, even to become Buddha. Uh, so the, um, I think it's just one story that um, one uh, guy, he killed 999 people, remember? The, uh, uh, what do you call the gallon of uh, fingers, murders, you, don't, you know about that story? No. So um, many shots. So he went out to kill 999 people. And each time he, Kill one, he chop up the uh, the fingers, and he string uh, he uh, string them at the gallon, and he wear around his neck. So um, when he saw the Buddha, right, so he chased after the Buddha so that he could get the Buddha finger. That's the last one for thousand person. So, but he could not. So but later on, the Buddha convert him. He become Buddhist monk. And even he become ah. Yeah. What course, was it? What was his name? Um, I forgot his name. Um, yeah. yeah I, I, let me. That's Start with a, I forgot his name. Mm. And, and, yes. And yeah, and go and go Limala. That's his story okay. about. So that's why, that's why the rest of who they are, they still have good of nature there. Yeah. Okay, so um, let's move on. Mm. On this one, let's see here. You like to do? Yeah. <clears throat> Does my consciousness arise whenever my consciousness arrives? Yes, okay. Where the one is there, the other is, which arises first. The I consciousness and my consciousness. Mm. Yes, that's what the, the consciousness is about. Uh, in um, in Buddhist view, uh, we we discuss a lot about this type of eight type of consciousness. Mm -hmm. This is a list of them here. Mm. So this. The eyes, the size, and so forth. And the six consciousness control of them. Uh, and this is the, the my, the addition consciousness, and seven one, seven one is the mana, the uh, obscuration, the poison, or the, the one that attached to the real arrow, and this is the storehouse. That's what we showed last time. Every information. We have store here, whether we see, whether we hear, whether we pass, and so forth. Uh, we, we store in that type of uh, storage um, consciousness. 
Not only this lifetime, but the next lifetime, of many, many times. That's why sometimes in, in our dream, we see all kinds of dreams. So those information we may have stored in our consciousness. And that's why sometimes when we um, met someone, we have to go um, first impression, right? Even we could not recognize that person on the spot, even before our conversation, we recognize that person had some type of connection with us, what we call gut feeling, right? And what we call um, the, um, the intuition that go beyond our thinking. When we have under the thinking, it's, it's much slower than our gut feeling, our, um, uh, our intuition. That's, that's what we saw there. We, we recognize them. Yeah. So let's move on to the next one. Mm, let's see here. You like to. Where there is mind consciousness, Nagasena, is there always contact and feeling? Yes. Where there is mind consciousness, there is contact and feeling. And also perception, intention, initial application, and sustained application. Mm. Yes. What, <clears throat> what is the characteristic mark of contact? But give me an illustration. As when two rams butt together, the eye is like one ram, visible object is like the other, and butting together of the two is contact. This is, yes. So um, you also, so as soon as it, you know, if you process a, a color, you don't recognize color until you see it, right? And once you see it, so so you have to, but you can't recognize the color without the lights on. So that the only way for that to appear in your mind is through the. Through the so we talk about can the blind people see? I've, I've, so I've talked to blind people. Um, um, I used to live over by the school for the blind and I had a lot of um, blind neighbors and I had a blind neighbor that used to go out there with a chainsaw, a weed whacker. He used to ride on the back of a motor scooter. I mean, he actually could drive um, fairly big, um, like farm equipment back and forth. They would, they would like time it. Uh, so anyways, and um, they, they have an idea of what sight is, you know, through other, other descriptions, but, you know, if they're, if they're born blind, mm. you know, like, like this, like this guy was, who, who, I mean, he would, he could do all kinds of plumbing. I really? mean, he uses other senses. Right. Well, they are, he had just whatever his world was adapted to. And, um, but yeah, it's interesting. It is a really interesting conversation with a person that's born blind as to have them describe what they think vision is. Mm -hmm. Well, Tammy, what do you think, Tammy? You hear? Can you hear Tammy? Yes, I can hear. Yeah, I mean that. Uh, what do you think? We talk about that, right? Can blind people see? Right. Yeah, we've talked about that, and just kind of um, like she's pointed out, just that they see in their own way. Like they might not see like me or you, well, like we see with our eyes, with our vision, but they have other ways of seeing and sensing. Yeah, and Stephen, what do you think? Um, for the blind, it may not be seeing with a physical eye like we do, but they can see by other method, their ears, they can hear things, they can distinguish um, just normal uh, touch, feeling. Um, 
and stuff like that. So that is the only way that they can see. So which is a different, you know, normal way of seeing through the eyes. Marino, what do you think? Uh, we cannot hear you, sorry. Again, again, I, I muted it. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Well, I think that as they said, like, yeah, I think that they can see in a way through their own um, methods. I have heard that some people develop more with the touching and smells. Yeah. So in Buddhist view, our five sense is like the window, right? The window in the doors. If one is broken, right? Let's say the main one is broken, we can use the other one. If we cannot see, yes. Our, um, our, our hearing is be more sensitive, right? Most of them, right? And, and vice versa, right? Uh, for that people, they, they can see, right? They're more sensitive than us. They pay more attention about the artists. Has sense. anybody heard that um, it's a really popular, I don't know if it was like a radio lab or this American guy, like hold on, the, the name of the podcast episode was that boy. And it was um, a person, I think he lost his vision, but he learned, he taught himself echolocation mm. through a series of, of clicking. Um, that's super, super interesting. Yeah. It's just no more. Let me read this. What Woman, is the characteristic yeah. mark of the, the being experienced as a man? Give me an illustration. As a man who has been of service to a king, has been granted an official post, after, afterwards enjoys the benefits of being in office. It's easy to understand, right? The feeling, that's all. We have a sense of uh, joy, but in, in, in Buddhist view, it's three types of feeling good feeling, bad feeling, pleasant, unpleasant, and neutral. Mm. In all kinds of things, when we see, when we hear, when we taste, so that, that's what it's about. Yeah. Um, and Stephen, can you read number 10, please? What is the characteristic mark of perception? Recognizing, O oh King, of blueness, yellowness, or redness. Give me an illustration. It is as the king's treasurer recognizes the king's goods on seeing their color and shape. This one in the symbol explanation, right? And Stephen, can you hear? Can you understand? Yes, yes, I. Yeah. Uh, the first part there, yeah, I guess it's just the, um, I guess, understanding um, what you perceive of what your, uh, the meaning of it, I guess. Um, and then uh, he was going on and say uh, the illustration would be uh, the king's treasure recognizes the king's goods on seeing their color and shape uh, of all the, uh, I guess, the abundance of riches of the king. So, recognition, right? Yes, yeah. Recognition, that's, that's what we hear in this contest. This is one by perception. Uh, Hemi, can you read, please? What is the characteristic mark of intention? Conceiving, O king, in preparing. Give me an illustration. As a man having prepared poison and having drunk it would suffer pain, so one having thought about some evil deed and having done it afterwards has to suffer in hell. Hmm. So it's just kind of describing with intention so intention our thought um even with not just thought but actually going through with something the karma that they're going to suffer afterwards is going to be hell so they're going to create their own hell through their actions that they've done yeah yeah in this new intention how everything and even in new life too right intention is more important more severe in, in the negative way, right? 
if we have bad intention to harm others, that's what the green, uh, very bad karma is about. Okay, uh, May Ringo, you like to read the material, please? Yeah. What is the characteristic mark of consciousness? No, Ringo King. Give me an illustration. As a watchman in the city square would know someone was coming, whichever direction he came from. So when a man sees an object, hears a sound, smells an odor, tastes a savor, feels a touch, or knows an idea, it is by consciousness that he knows it. Hmm. That's easy to understand, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we get the knowing, that's all. When the, that, that's what the cis consciousness is about. When we open the door, and see, when we open our eyes, we see things there. If we close our eyes, we cannot see things. But when we hear some sound, right? We, we, we recognize that the recognition is the consciousness. We know, I, with hearing, we don't, there are certain, I've brought up this example, or, but if you're not familiar with a certain language, you won't, there are certain sounds in other languages you won't even hear just because you've never been trained, you, your brain's never been trained to recognize that sound. So you like don't actually recognize or your, your brain doesn't process that sound at all. And another, another neat thing is like if you're, um, that I've used for a similar like example, like uh, when you're sitting outside, let's say you pick something like a uh, pretty obvious, the crickets. And then then sit then if you're sitting with someone, say, do you hear the dog barking in the back? Second they say, I hear the dog barking, do you hear the crickets? No. You stop hearing the crickets. You stop registering the crickets as soon as you change your attention to the faint sound of. So there's all kinds of noises going on that we stop hearing until you actually have to put your mind Focus there on. Mm -hmm. to recognize that it's actually happening. Mm -hmm. yeah. What is the purpose? Hello, sorry. Um, can I ask a question? Yes. Um, could I send the uh, Zoom link to a friend of mine that she wants to learn Buddhism? Yeah, yeah please. Yeah. Okay, please. thank you. So that's what talk about the initial application probably the intentional it's just um, you understand this to focus on right hissing right. you understand this what's me well it's it's that um what well just like the example that i that i used it's your intention to pick up something or scan mm -hmm. something or make your mind. <clears throat> but if your attention doesn't go there, you, you don't recognize it's there. But let's say you have um, uh, a saw going off in the background and, and you decide that, that that's a really annoying, like the high pitch is, is bothersome. You will keep hearing, but you will keep hearing that part of the sound. That part of the sound won't, won't go away until you figure it out. How. So this initial application is like pay more attention. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes for the translators, uh, somehow they use uh, different terms. It's not easy. To... Yeah, and Stephen, can you read number 14, please? What is the characteristic mark of sustained application? Examining again and again. Give an illustration. Like the striking of a gong is initial 
is initial application, like the reverberation is sustained application. You understand that? Yes. So basically, it's just um, in order to keep it sustained, you have more to practice it. So and practice and practice. So this is like um, mental uh, how would you pattern, right? Like yes. uh, when we wake up in the morning, we drink tea or we drink coffee. We build up this type of mental uh, behaviors for so many years. That's what about. Yeah. yeah. So really wrong. Your friend come in. Can you need the yes. link? Uh, you know. I sent her the link. Yeah, she oh, she should okay. be joining. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> number fifteen. Is it possible to separate these things? Say, this is contact, this is feeling, this is perception, this is tension, this is consciousness, this is initial application, and this is saying application. No way, no way. This cannot be done. The final way to there is two things, third, salt, and this is two, two, and pepper. One could not take out the flavor of the third, and still it's saying this is the flavor of the third, or take out the flavor of the salt and say this is the flavor of the salt. That each flavor would be simply present for the synthesis process. Hi, Madi, right? Yes. Oh, she live in, in Houston or in your country? In Houston. Hi, Madi, how you been? I am good, how are you? Oh. Um, you go to UPH? Are you working? No, I'm working. Okay. All right, welcome then. So here we discuss about uh, the 12 clean condition according to Buddhist view. Yeah. All right. So you understand this process? What's about? So this is saying that um, the consciousness and experience that we all had, um, and then what what the meaning meant to do is experience that is um, like into a thing of like um, you know good is good, bad is bad, no matter what you think of it. We can separate, right? This is the whole process, right? Yeah, without let's say, let's say um, without contact, we could not have this feeling. Without feeling, we could have, have thinking. Right? Without thinking, we could not have um, uh, intention, right? In contact and so forth. This is a whole series. They connect together. Yeah, we can accept it. That's why he gave that example. Yeah. Okay, so um, yeah, go ahead, um, Mariro. Uh, you can read uh, number 16. Yeah. Then the elder said, is salt, O king, recognizable by the eye? Yes, your reverence, it is. Be careful, O king, what you say. Then it is recognizable by the tongue? Yes, that is right. But Nagaseta, is it only by the tongue that every kind of salt is recognizable? Yes, every kind. Then why do bullocks bring whole cartloads of it? It is possible to bring salt by itself, for example. Salt also has mass, but it is it is impossible to weight salt. One can only weight the mass. You are dexterous, Nagaseta, in argument. Hmm. You understand that? I'm a bit confused on that one, on what he tried to mean. Okay. Oh, um, so you can, you can really only recognize salt. You can really only tell that it's salt by tasting to, to quantify it by its taste. Like you can say with the sight contact, sure you can say it's white, but you can't definitely identify it um, because the inherent quality <clears throat> of salt is the salty taste rather than the salty taste. Mm -hmm. So every, yes? 
Um, but I think that's also kind of say is that collectively, uh, um, salt is only good. Salt is there to be good with salt. You know, so um, without getting salt, salt is still there. It's there. So it's you know, you know it's saying that the same thing with salt. Yeah, in, but in this context, you say that in every um, sense has different function, right? The eye see object, right? The tongue could taste the food, whichever. And that's what about here. Yeah. Even, even the, we can wait the thought, but we could not recognize until we taste it. That's what it's about. Yeah, so, um, Madi, so we here in this group, we read. Everyone of us take a turn to read and, uh, and we can discuss part by part, all right, Marty? Uh, which part of Houston you live, Marty? Uh, Houston, Texas. Which part of Houston do you live? Kind of what? Where, where you live in Houston? Oh, I live in Kingwood. It's like a suburb right outside of Houston. Oh, okay. Is that uh, uh, in the north, right? Um, it's kind of it's kind of more southern. Oh, Houston. southern. Mm -hmm. Nearby is around Sugarland area. Um, yeah, it's about like forty-five minutes to an hour drive to Sugarland, wow. so a little bit. Mm. Okay, let me review one more time what we discussed here. Uh, what we discussed here, Marty. This is, is about what they call here. Here, that's what they call the cycle of dependent origination, right? So it's a 12 planes. In, in the past, because of ignorance, we raised a certain type of karma. And that's why we're here with in the form of energy, in the form of consciousness. And we have the body and the mind. When we have the body and mind, we have six sense base, we have contact, like I see this, the object. Uh, and when we have contact, right, we could have a feeling. Like when we test, um, like a, a, a cake, right, it's sweet. So we have good feeling about the cake and we want to have more and so forth. This is a cycle there. All right, so let's go back here. Uh, let's see here. Don't worry, okay, uh, Madi, you can read, can you read uh, number one and uh, we can discuss together, okay? Go ahead, Madi, number one here. Okay. What is the root? Are the five sense bases produced from various commas or all from one? Is that how you say it, commas? Yes. Okay, from various commas, O oh King, give me an illustration. If you were to sow, sow five <laughs> kinds of seeds in a field, the produce would be of five kinds. Okay, you understand that? Um, let's see. You know what's my five sense, right? The eyes, the ears, the nose, the body, and, uh, the tongue. That's what the, the, the Python is about. Okay. okay. Mm. So the question is, are the five sense bases produced from a virus, comma, or all from one, from, from virus, right? Mm -hmm. so from virus, comma. That's why we're different from animal, even, even uh, among us, right? We have all kind of people, right? Whereas we good, we left hand, left hand person, a right hand person, right? Or oh, some of us could have, um, uh, we could sense things more quicker than others and so forth. So everyone is different based upon our karma. Uh, so that's why he said that if we saw five kind of seed in the field and produce five, Type of mm, trees and plants and so forth. In uh, Buddhist view, um, the Buddha has what he calls 32 special marks. So it, so he had that type of special marks. Uh, it's not because uh, someone gave to him, but because of his cultivation. Let's put it this way: like we talk about the, the blind people, right? They cannot see, but because they 
they develop the sense of, let's say, hearing, right? They're more sensitive in hearing. They develop that have a special skill so that it would compensate in their seeing, and not because someone gave to them. And for us too, sometimes, right? Even if we're not left-handed person, but if we want to try, we can train ourselves. That's what it's about. When we do, we won't have intention to write in the by using our left hand, we can change that type of karma. And that's what it's about. Yeah. It makes sense, uh, Maddy? Maddy? Uh, okay. You might do it, number two. Yeah. Sure. No, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I, I'm. Oh. What's, what's wow. your name? Okay, Sam, please, number two, please. Uh, why is it made to make that all men are not alike? Some are short lived and some are long lived. Some are great and some are healthy. Some are ugly and some handsome. Some powerful and some powerful. Some poor and some rich. Some low born and some noble. Why is it that all men are not alike? Is in Dunasen, right? Can, can you summarize that? Um, he's just saying, uh, Yeah, tell me, right? Tell me, you talk, we talk about this kind of thing before, right? So how could we change our karma? How could we control our karma? What do you think, uh, tell me? By becoming more present in, in the, um, the moment. So the more you can be aware in each moment, the more you can change your, your karma because you're more aware of what's going on. So you can rather than say the words that are going to produce bad karma or doing the body actions that are going to create bad karma, you can transform it at the mind. So you can recognize the thought um, and understand what type of karma it's going to create and then move forward with it or transform it into some, a, di a different, uh, just transform it. Well, Reno, how, how could we uh, are the owner of our own karma? I think at least from what I understood from the passage, I would say that each one of us have different desires and such desires create uh, the unique karma that we all have to aspire to change. Okay. What do you think? Some part of karma can we, we can change, some part of karma we cannot, what do you think? Not me? <laughs> No, I'm sorry, I asked um, Ivan here, yeah. Um, what do you think? I think it's all, it's all intention. If you okay. choose to change your actions, actions upon you change for the return of that action. Let's say, um, while we're driving the car, right? Even, even uh, sometimes, or most time we drive carefully, but we cannot control all the people. They may hit us. They, mom, they may bump to us, they may hit the back, the front, and so forth. Is that the karma? It's out of control. What do you think? Is that the karma? I don't know. I guess it depends on the situation of how you heard or how you see it after you get hit. Yeah. I don't know. That's my this this is my story. I was literally driving the loving kindness meditation and my 
brand new car got hit oh, <laughs> and no. the guy drove and the kids drove off of it to hit and run oh, no. and I was like well I guess this is my lesson in impermanence <laughs> and my lesson in loving kindness and that this is my uh, this is my opportunity to use this now because yeah and Stephen what do you think yeah, we try our best to control our karma, to control our car, but we cannot control other people's cars. Mm. Other yes. people's action, they, if they drive carelessly, uh, or they may hit and run. So is that our karma? It's, it? it's kind of yes and no answer. Um, as long as you can just accept it as is, like just uh, what Kirsten just said, that uh, being hit with a car, there is, you know, she can be also become agitated and angry and then run, try to run after that guy, sue him, you know, for every single penny he has, or just accept it as is and be compassionate and live because things happen just like we say is out of control. Sometimes we can control it, sometimes we can't. Um, I was in a similar situation, hit from behind not from the guy from behind me, but it was from a third person hitting the second person, which bumped him into me. But little stuff like that, you know, uh, happens. So, and uh, you just do your best to move on. So um, I'm guessing that's my way of saying it's, yes, it's kind of our comma, but you just have to learn and accept it as is, so. Yeah, and I think it depends on, okay, you realize you have this situation. What, what are you doing with, with exactly. your own exactly. karma, am I going to make a, am I going to generate a positive, loving, whatever, have I decided to do that? Or have I decided in retribution, and vengeance? And so what am I, what am I generating after our, our two energies? About my rural in El Salvador, most people drive the cars or, or what? Or do they have insurance? Like here, or what? Yeah, El Salvador is a pretty dangerous place to drive, not even gonna lie. <laughs> what is that? It's a very dangerous place to drive. I, I would not suggest driving here. Really? Wow. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not a good idea. Really? But they have, they have uh, all of them have insurance like in the state or no, not, not many? No, I would say people are very reckless in here when it comes to driving. Just on my way to the house today, I saw three uh, crashes. Wow. Yeah. Um, well, Marty, what do you think? If you really, really uh, uh, mm, careful uh, in driving, but somehow other people may hit and run or hit you to the back or the front of your car, is that your karma? What do you think? Um, I think I don't know. Mm. I think it could be either one. I don't know if is there something that specifically determines like is it karma that's something you did or is it just like coincidence? But I don't know, either way it's not favorable, but you know, with everything comes a lesson. About Tammy, what do you think, Tammy? So if you if your car gets hit, is it your karma? Is that the question? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you really, really mm, are careful in your driving, but um, you cannot control order, right? They may cut you off. They right. may hit you to come back, the front, the design, and so forth. Is that your karma when they hit you? I, I think so. I think yes. Because, and it might not be from karma from yesterday or today, but it's karma from some, some point in time something there's no like coincidences so you've created it somehow but it doesn't mean it's necessarily something that happened recently but at some point you've created a situation i think I don't know if I'm saying it right, but like things happen for a reason. 
So and you just don't know how they want that. How you learn from that lesson too, right? What do you think? Um, well, I think there also was a school like the condensed origination. Like, you know, we have to also consider, you know, that, that we're not really even individuals, really. I mean, we have kind of an individual existence, but it's like that. So there's also there's really just all this like karma floating around. And plus, like uh, Marine, you mentioned, right? If you drive your car in that kind of neighborhood, right? Yeah. It may be dangerous for you. Yeah. But at the same time, if you drive to different neighborhoods, it'd be safe. So in Buddhist view, this is what we call collective karma. And you, you may decide whether you go there or on that direction or on the other direction. Like the whole combination karma, the business karma, the country's karma, the mind energetic stream of action. Mm -hmm. Okay, so thanks, this time is up quickly. So uh, let us stop here today and we discuss this, um, this topic next week. Yeah. Okay, good. All right, so thank you. Well, thank you. All about that. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. My dad actually,